Now this is a tumor that once you've seen uh, a few times, you'll recognize it forever. Over here, it reminds you a little bit of spiradenoma, little blue nodules. It's very uh, dark blue in color, very, very basaloid and blue. But you can see, when you go into areas like this, that the individual nests of tumor, they mold into one another. You can see that they squish up next to each other and kind of this one takes on the shape of its neighbor and they squish together and people have likened this to puzzle pieces like jigsaw puzzle pieces or as my fellow always likes to say giraffe spots. They kind of look like the spots on a giraffe and I think that's a clever clever thing that Ed has taught me. So being a fellowship director I teach but I also learn an awful lot from my fellows each year. So that's how I increase my knowledge over time. So this is a really nice example of that kind of giraffe spot or puzzle piece pattern. And a couple other things that are a little different. Cylindroma is really closely related to spiradenoma. And in fact, they often coexist, which I'll show you in a minute. But if we go up close, a couple really nice things about cylindroma. The individual puzzle pieces or giraffe spots, if you like, the individual nests really have a very prominent thick layer of that pink basement membrane surrounding each individual nest. And that's really dramatic. Usually you can see, see there's like a real bright, bright pink outline around each individual nest. And not only is there that, but those little droplets of pink basement membrane I showed you, the little kind of spheres of it that I showed you in the spiradenoma, they're usually present in cylindroma and usually in abundance. There are usually many, many, many little droplets or globules of pink basement membrane all scattered throughout each individual tumor nest. See how each individual nest has lots of little pink balls in the middle of it, little pink droplets of, um, of basement membrane. And it can be really dramatic, like so abundant. So I find that that basement membrane is very beautiful to look at and it's also a really nice, helpful diagnostic clue. The sweat duct component of cylindroma, again, can be like in spiradenoma, it can be kind of hard to find. You might have to search around. The good thing is that usually once you get this tumor, uh, once you learn it, it's diagnosable from the very lowest power instantly. You see it, you know, like that's cylindroma. Once you've seen a couple, you'll re remember it forever. Hopefully once you've seen this video, you will. But if you want to find the sweat ducts and convince yourself it's really a sweat, a sweat duct or sweat gland tumor, you can see that there's a little uh, duct space here with, uh, with pink fluffy secretions and that little pink cuticle around the outside. And there's tons and tons and tons of literature about sweat gland tumors and whether they come from eccrine origin or apocrine origin, whether they come from the sweat gland component or from the duct component. And in my personal opinion, I think while that stuff's really interesting from a, a biological or bio, the, the physiological etiology of the tumor, for practical purposes, I personally don't find um, splitting out whether something's eccrine or apocrine to be of great value in my daily practice. So I think recognizing the tumors and recognizing, oh yes, this is a benign sweat gland tumor, that's the more important thing most of the time. Um, we'll have to do a separate video on malignant sweat gland tumors because it's a much more complicated topic. Here, look, here's another sweat duct here. Another duct over here and those lumens lined by that kind of pink cuticle. So beautiful example of cylindroma, and again, from low power, even though there are big kind of nodular nests, each nest is composed of multiple individual little islands or nests of tumors molding together with each other like puzzle pieces or like giraffe spots. So that's cylindroma, really beautiful example.